Welcome back, everyone. Well, as many of you uh, know, uh, we're we are interviewing a lot of people this re week related to the activities in and around Glens Falls to celebrate the end of World War II, the 70th anniversary. And joining me today is Matt Rosell, whose day job is a history teacher in the Hudson Falls High School school system, but also the author of uh, one book in particular that we want to make you aware of. So welcome, Matt. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, this book that you have, The Things Our Fathers Saw, is really a tribute to the men and the women who fought in World War II and really a transcription of some of the oral history that they gave you when you interviewed them, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I can't even imagine what you learned. What was it like? Well, about 20, 25 years ago, we had the veterans who would come into the classroom. Originally, I, I began by having students bring surveys home to their mm -hmm. grandparents to kind of get them interested in World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it just mushroomed into a project where the, uh, the grandparents or the aunts and uncles, or in some cases the parents, would come into the classroom. So we began to videotape those interviews, and eventually we, I started to have the kids actually transcribe them. Mm -hmm. So by bringing the individual into the actual classroom, it was like a piece of history was walking off the page of the textbook. Mm -hmm. And the next question for, for the students and for myself was, well, where does this person fit into the big picture of World War II? Um, we have veterans who are at Pearl Harbor. We have veterans who fought throughout the Pacific in this particular book. Um, and actually, we're in Tokyo Bay for the signing of the surrender ceremony. Mm. We've got guys who were prisoners of war. We have women who were flight nurses evacuating uh, the wounded Marines or airmen or, or sailors out of harm's way. Um, we have about 30 stories of individuals that otherwise would have been lost had had we not taken the time to actually talk to these people who, who really had something important to say. Yeah, you know, they refer to that generation as the greatest generation. And the more you learn about it, my father was a World War II vet, and the more you learn about it, it was almost like it was not spoken about. If I, I don't know if I'm saying this the right way or not, but my father alluded to the fact that once the war was over and they came home, they didn't really talk about it. Oh. And what they witnessed, we happen to live in a day of age, day and age now, where everything's video centric and all of these other things. And the experiences that these men and women had in the field with each other are the kinds of stories that you just, you can't believe when you hear them, right? Right, right. Um, I think it was a universal experience for the uh, Americans who went overseas. 16 million men and women put on uniforms during World War II, and about three quarters of them did go overseas, you know, not all of them were in combat, but as you stated, when they came home, you know, it was time to get on with life, I think. Mm -hmm. The GI Bill came out, which gave people all kinds of opportunity, and I think that, again, a lot of people wanted to move away and just get on with their lives. Mm -hmm. It was such a, such a big interruption, so to speak. But about, I'd say, 30 or 40 years later is when people probably began to become more aware of what the World War II generation actually went through mm -hmm. with the uh, anniversary of the uh, Normandy landings, etc. cetera, D-Day, President Reagan going over to Omaha Beach, mm -hmm. the veterans reuniting sometimes for the first time um, in 40 years, mm -hmm. and retired people now. Mm -hmm. That's when I think a lot of the, a lot of the, they talk to each other mm -hmm. at reunions and such. Mm -hmm. But when the younger generation, I'm talking the grandkids, started to ask the questions, that's when I think they began to really open up. At least that was my experience in the classroom. Now, this is, you have other books, by the way. That this, this is the one first book. to be dedicated yeah. to the Pacific Theater, right. mm -hmm. which was the fighting that was done um, in, that, uh, in, in that part of the world. The interviews that you have with these people, those are the people that lived in our area, right? In the yeah. Tri North counties, in Warren County, Washington yeah. County, probably. Yeah, Sarah for the North most County. part, just about everybody in the book is mm -hmm. from the Tri County area. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's remarkable that you have chronicled this. The, uh, we were talking before we went on camera that majority of the people, even in the book, have passed away since. You yeah. know, you realize that in my dad's case, he's ninety years old. So you know that, uh, but you have it right here. Mm -hmm. you know? um, now, as part of 
uh, Charles Pelz, uh, conductor for Glens Falls Symphony Orchestra, has put together a lot of different collaborations for this week coming up. And you have an event coming up at the Hyde Museum, mm -hmm. correct? Now that's Sunday the 15th. Right. So it almost bookends the week because Charles's concert is the 8th. Right. And your uh, lecture is going to be at the Hyde Museum on Sunday the 15th? That's right. What time is it going to be? It'll be from 2 to 4 p.m. It. It'll be a lecture combined with uh, a book signing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really, I'll talk about this theme of uh, coming home. And right. it's titled Coming Home, Reflections on the 70th Anniversary of the End of World War II. Mm -hmm. And I think it will tie together the week's activities pretty well mm -hmm. as far as um, just reflecting on, you know, what happened, this universal experience that America went through that unfortunately we seem to, in our really busy, hectic, crazy world, we don't take the time, I think, to really think about how close we came as a country or how close the world came to uh, utter disaster. Yes, yeah, right. You know, it's not, not a foregone conclusion that the Allies were going to win the war. And if you read the book, right. it comes across very clear. Mm -hmm. And it was the everyday soldier, sailor, marine, nurse mm -hmm. that really turned the tide for, for, for the United States. And that's the point I'm trying to get across here. Uh, you know, another thing that uh, he, uh, Matt's not mentioning, but he's been doing this for 20-something years. So the wealth of knowledge that you have and the experiences that you've had in talking with these men and women who served is, uh, that's a depth of knowledge that not many of us will ever have met. And that uh, I really look forward to this lecture and book signing on the 15th. Uh, really love to hear you speak about this. Um, it's at the Hyde Museum, which is right uh, off Centennial Circle in right downtown in uh, Glens Falls. World-renowned museum, by the way. You should see the exhibits. And that's 2 o'clock on Sunday the 15th. All right. And I, Matt, a very fitting way to end a whole week's worth of activities related to this. Well, thanks. I'm really glad to be part of it. Good. And thank you very much for coming on. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.